All right, time to cover one of the most important lectures, certainly in the data modeling section, but perhaps in the entire course. Let's talk about filter flow. Now to demonstrate, I'm gonna use a very simple example. Here we've just got a three table model, two data tables, sales and returns, both with valid connections or relationships to a single lookup, territory lookup. Now when you look closely at the two relationships, you'll note the filter directions, which are shown as arrows, point from the one side of the relationship or the lookup side to the many side, the data side. And when you filter any table, that filter context is passed along through that relationship line to all related downstream tables following the direction of the arrow. And by contrast, filters or filter context cannot flow upstream. In other words, it cannot flow against the direction of the arrow. So you can almost think of these relationships as filter wires, because that's all that relationships do is they pass filter context back and forth between tables. Quick pro tip, one thing you may have already noticed that I've been doing is that I like to arrange my lookup tables above my data tables in every data model that I build. And that just helps serve as a visual reminder that filters flow downstream from those lookups down to your data tables. So let's look at a visual representation of why filter flow is so important. We're gonna look at that same simple three table model and let's say we wanna analyze sales and returns broken down by territory key. Now, the only valid way to do that is to use the territory key field from our lookup table. And when we grab that field from the lookup, pull it into our matrix rows, we see the proper accurate values for order quantity and return quantity, both broken down by territory. Now, the reason we get the correct answer here is because that filter context that we created by using the territory key in the lookup table is able to pass or flow downstream to both the sales table and the returns table. But keep in mind, we also have a territory key in the returns data, as well as a territory key in the sales data. So technically there are three different ways we could try to replicate this view. So let's take a look at what happens when we try to do that. Filtering using territory key from our sales data table will yield the correct order quantities, since those come from the sales data table, but incorrect returns values. And the reason that's the case is that the filter context that we created by using territory key in the sales data table is stuck in this table. It cannot flow up through this relationship because it can't flow against the direction of the arrow to filter either the lookup or the returns data. So as a result, the return quantity knows nothing about the filter context that was set from using the territory key in the sales data table, and therefore just returns the same grand total value over and over and over again. Now, very similar case, if we try to use the territory key from the returns table, we see the correct value for the return quantity now, but incorrect values for order quantity, because the filter context that we created by using the territory key in the returns data is stuck in the returns data table. It can't filter the lookup or the sales data table. So just like our last example, order quantity now knows nothing about the filter context passed from the returns data table and therefore returns the grand total over and over and over again. In addition to that, you'll notice that this table is smaller, it contains fewer rows, and that's because only territories that registered returns are even gonna be visible in this table since the filter is taking place within that returns data table. So we don't even see data from territories two and three, even though they registered orders. So this is a little bit tricky to grasp at first, but it's an incredibly important concept that's gonna come up time and time again as we start working with more complicated concepts like DAX formulas and interactions between visuals in the report view. So to really drive this point home, let's hop back into Power BI and build our own matrix visual to see this filter flow concept for ourselves. All right, back in my report view, in my AdventureWorks file, I've got the same matrix that we just showed in our last video. And to follow the demo that we just talked about, I'm gonna select the matrix. And instead of gender here, let's go ahead and find our territories table. There it is and we want the sales territory key. We're gonna drag that into rows. 
So just like we were demonstrating, we've got 10 sales territories, one through 10, and we're seeing proper order quantities and proper return quantities. And you can see from that last example that territories two and three did not register any returns in our sample. So those cells are blank. So this is an accurate, valid view for orders and returns by sales territory. But just like we demonstrated, if we pull sales territory out of the rows and we drill into the actual sales data itself and grab the territory key from there, when we drop that one into rows, now you'll see that return quantity duplicated every single row. But you'll still see all 10 territories because all 10 territories generated orders. And I think you see where this is going. We can pull territory key out, drill into our returns table, grab the returns table version of the territory key. And there you see that order quantities are now duplicated, return quantities are correct, and those two territories that did not register returns don't even show up here in the matrix because they were filtered out from the start. So hopefully this demo starts to give you a sense of why filter flow is so important to understand. Making sure that we have a crystal clear understanding of our model's filter flow will be critical for making sure that the views we're creating, the filters we're using, and the numbers that we're showing are 100% accurate.